Hey folks, today is Friday, December 1st, believe it or not, uh, 2023. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. Now, before we jump into it, uh, let's do what we often do with this show uh, and give you some goodies. Uh, this is a new Unreal Engine 5 tech demo that's been making the rounds with some pretty crazy graphics. This is a real-time forest demonstration. This is all running in updated Unreal Engine 5. Uh, this is by MAWI United or MAWI United. And I mean, look, look at this. I mean, they titled the video the most realistic forest ever in, in like a video game forest. And I tend to agree with that. It's not really for me the level of detail, uh, like the fauna, of course it is, but uh, it's really the lighting and how that all goes down. And you can check out the full video, of course, it will all be linked in the description down below as well as everything else I talk about this week. But this is running on an RTX 4090. It is 100% procedurally generated. It's four square kilometers. This is photogrammetry scanned assets. That's why you get a lot of the detail in the plants. This is ultra high res nanite foliage and lumen dynamic lighting and virtual shadow maps that really makes the lighting and how it goes through the leaves and the trees just look so realistic. There's player camera like foliage interaction so the stuff will move and there's full dynamic wind. So uh, the developer listed all of this to describe how all this comes together. Uh, my question still remains like it does every time we show off stuff like this. Unreal Engine 5, the tool set that game makers use, it seems like it's making it easier than ever to make really good looking games. So I just wonder when we're going to actually see this level of fidelity in our mainstream regular old video games. Is it a matter of years or decades? I don't know. But I did see that pop off and it was pretty interesting so we wanted to share it as well as something from a little bit over a week ago titled Sanctuary. This is from Torkuma Shija on uh, YouTube and and this is less gaming focused, more cinematic focused. Uh, this person created the jungles of Thailand in Unreal Engine 5, specifically with a lot of lumen, and it's pretty gorgeous. Of course, the other big bit of news this week, uh, this kind of came last minute Friday morning, but we now know when we're going to actually see the next Grand Theft Auto. I mean, now it's an announcement for an announcement. Rockstar said a trailer was coming in December, and now they've posted, we know, trailer one for the next GTA is coming Tuesday, December 5th at 9 a.m. Eastern. So that's New York time, that's my time. So now you know when you're gonna hear a little bit from Rockstar officially, like of the next Grand Theft Auto. So we'll probably make a reaction video and all stuff like that. So again, not a lot of news with it other than that now you know when you can set your alarm, so to speak. What do we expect in all honesty? I'm hoping something like the original reveal for Grand Theft Auto V. A little bit more of something that just sets the stage, sets the scene, the tone, uh, a little bit of the story and has tons to speculate on. I feel like the game is still a little bit of a ways out, but who knows? They have been working on it for a really long time, so maybe this will be a full-fledged gameplay trailer. I don't know either way. At this point, speculating, it's not really worth it since we are getting this official reveal pretty soon. The next story I wanted to talk about has been making headlines quite a bit. It's uh, Bethesda responding to criticism or negative reviews on Steam of Starfield. In articles and social media, screenshots have circulated of uh, like Bethesda customer support or the Bethesda team responding directly to customer Steam review type things. Not really clapping back or anything like that, but just kind of like explaining some, like some people complaining about loading screens and then they went into uh, describing why the game has loading screens. It's a little off-putting, I would say. I, I think a lot of people are kind of miffed by this. I've seen people like really running with this. I don't really think it's like a big deal or anything like that, but it is worthy of a chuckle. I do want to point out though, what this is, isn't necessarily in my opinion, damage control or anything like that. Uh, it is a a tactic that we actually see smaller developers use, more independently published games, smaller publishers, smaller developers live and die by Steam reviews. It's like part of the algorithm, it's part of recognition, it's part of the whole thing. So a lot of the times developers, uh, developer community, uh, you know, tech support type people will respond to negative Steam reviews for their games in the hopes of converting that pissed off customer to a positive customer. Uh, sometimes uh, a lot of developers that I've spoken to uh, think that you can really convert with kindness and even if somebody spent money on the game and it's not running well, if they get responded directly to uh, by a developer that says, hey, we're working on it or hey, we're sorry, 
it goes a long way. So on a bigger scale with Bethesda doing that approach, it's weird. I don't know if necessarily they should, I, I don't know, I don't make the rules. It's like on the one hand, at least they're not thinking they're above it, like they're, they're willing to wade into the pool of reviews. But for many people, not a good look. I don't know, I just feel like there's always a firestorm of controversy around Starfield, but hey. It's an interesting story for sure and it sparked some interesting conversations. So let me know what you think. This stool is gonna break any day now. Do you hear it? It's like, why do I always get the most rickety stools for this show? What are we What are we doing here? Uh, but with Starfield and Xbox, speaking of that, jumping on over to uh, some interesting quotes, it seems like at this point, Microsoft wants Xbox Game Pass on everything. According to GameSpot, Xbox CFO Tim Stewart said during like a big rich people investors summit thing that they want to make first party games and Game Pass available on, and I quote, every screen that can play games. And that also means other consoles and stuff. He said, and I quote, it's a bit of a change of strategy, not announcing anything broadly here, but our mission is to bring our first party experiences and our subscription services to every screen that can play games. That means smart TVs, that means mobile devices, that means what we would have thought of as competitors in the past, like PlayStation and Nintendo. Also, he said specifically that like Game Pass is a high margin business for Microsoft and they just wanna get it out there everywhere and generate. So this to me just sounds like from one of the top head corpos, not a Phil Spencer who is a head, but is more of like a, hey man, like th this is just from a corpo who, is, and I'm sorry I'm using that phrase, but like it's it's just in my lexicon now, of a corporate person saying what the company is really gonna do because other executives can say one thing, but when it's a higher up, like a CFO, which is chief, financial officer, their concern is the money. And I guess for right now, it is really to make bank on the whole Xbox Game Pass thing. At least that's how I read into this. I know I kind of stumbled through explaining that. I'm not very smart, but yeah. Hey, now switching gears over here real quick to talk about today's sponsor. It's Vessi. Now, if you're new to the channel, you might not know that Vessi has been providing dependable, comfortable footwear to us for years now. We've been recommending them forever. And that is specifically because it's great footwear. They have a bunch of different styles, shapes, colors for every person, every occasion. But also, of course, they are 100% waterproof. Like, yeah, really. But they don't feel like waterproof shoes. They just feel like regular old shoes, but they keep your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. They just work. And speaking of the winter, lately I've been rocking the Alta high top. Uh, this is kind of like a hybrid between a, a bit of a boot and also a high top, my favorite style of sneaker. So they've been crushing it this winter. I mean, it's actually, it's not winter yet, but it feels like winter and these are getting the job done. And if you haven't noticed, Vessi has you covered for everything now at this point. For a few years now, they've offered waterproof gloves, which we've been recommending for a while now. I showed them off last time we talked about Vessi. They're waterproof, they're great. And also they offer the overcast jacket. This is again, waterproof, but it's cozy on the inside. So again, for like whatever you need to wear, whatever type of weather, Vessi at this point really has you covered. It's a good way to get out there, get adventuring, get a little wet. So uh, if you do wanna check them out and it does support the show, just head to Vessi.com slash GameRanks. Again, that's Vessi.com slash GameRanks for a hookup, and uh, big thanks to Vessi for sponsoring these videos. Also in other news, a slight update on The Witcher 4, uh, which is an actual thing. It is codenamed Polaris. Uh, at this point, just under 50% of CD Projekt Red has moved on to working on that project. The other team is probably working on cleaning up cyberpunk stuff. Uh, CD Projekt Red did announce that there's another cyberpunk update coming soon soon with some tweaks and enhancements. Uh, then also CD Projekt Red has a lot of other projects going on, but the plan is for more people to keep jumping on this Witcher 4 project and we're probably not gonna see it anytime soon. I'm sorry, I don't wanna be like the bearer of bad news, but there's a reason right now why all we get are these little tiny updates and the game still just has a code name. It be it's because it's a ways off. Still, it is interesting. If you're looking for more insight, I linked in the description down below. Uh, GameSpot put out a really good 30 minute documentary on Cyberpunk 2077 and CD Projekt Red. Uh, they basically documented right before the Phantom Liberty expansion launch, uh, but they really talked to the developers about the fact that after CD Projekt Red launched Cyberpunk 2077, they were like, oh, we messed up. We need to rethink things and like pull ourselves up here. So basically a lot of inside baseball on how the entire company had to reorganize and restructure and change how they make their games. It's a really good watch documentary if you're interested in that stuff, whether you like cyberpunk or not. It's just an interesting insight into how games are made. So that will be linked in the description down below. I highly recommend that. But yeah, ultimately I am curious to see like whether that philosophy and this newly so quote unquote reformed CD Projekt Red is going to be taking that approach for The Witcher 4 and beyond. Who knows, but 
at the very least now, they have a big pile of money to work on more games and hopefully improve things. Uh, next up, in something I never expected, there's a new Tribes game coming out. Tribes 3 Rivals is an actual thing. This is gonna be on PC, through Steam and Epic, and eventually on consoles. There are play tests taking place soon. Uh, there is a gameplay trailer out there. You can see it on screen here. Uh, some of you younger folks might be like, that looks boring, that does not look exciting. Tribes was the shit a long time ago. It was awesome. So the way I'm looking at this, uh, with Half-Life kind of getting a resurgence and the Half-Life multiplayer stuff being revived for the 25th anniversary, uh, I've seen a lot of that online where it's just chaotic deathmatch in small arenas. So we have that, and now we have more tribes, I'm really hoping for a resurgence of like some old school style stuff. It never really went away. You know, people are still playing Quake and stuff like that, but the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. Next up, some stuff I have linked in the description down below. Uh, the first is a trailer for Batman, uh, the Arkham Trilogy coming to Nintendo Switch. We now know it's dropping December 1st with that shiny new uh, Battenson or Robert Pattinson, uh, the Batman suit that kind of leaked out early a couple weeks back. Boy, does it look good. Also, just speaking of like Arkham, Batman, Rocksteady stuff, uh, if you did get in, uh, it seems like those play tests, those like, you know, private alpha play tests are now going down for Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League if you signed up for those. I don't know if we're gonna hear anything come out of that again, but yeah, if you signed up, check your email or something like that. Uh, but also linked in the description down below uh, is a bunch of Game Pass stuff that is coming in December, uh, if you guys are interested in that. On this show, we don't usually share every single week and break down stuff coming to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Game Pass, but this was kind of a big significant drop for some people, so I figured I'd mention it. Also, Capcom showed off a lot more Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, there was a showcase this week with a bunch of gameplay, and it seems, uh, like from, from what we've seen here, uh, that is pretty much everything that Dragon's Dogma fans have wanted. Again, we'll have to judge the final product when we get our hands on it, but still, th this is pretty exciting so far. And with Rockstar announcing that the look of Grand Theft Auto is coming soon, uh, if you're looking for something to pass the time until then, uh, we got a new video from GTA 6 o'clock. Yes, I, the, the channel used to be GTA 5 o'clock, now it's GTA 6 o'clock, uh, with just some insights and speculation, but uh, they were a channel I watched a lot back in the day for GTA 5, and they're back at it again so many, so many years later, and it's already a great first video, so if you just like listening to stuff like that, I link that in the description down below. Also, Resident Evil 4 VR is launching on PlayStation VR 2 December 8th. Uh, we got a new announcement of that. Also, that there is like a free version or like a demo coming the same day. I think I'm gonna be playing the hell out of this. Uh, I tested Resident Evil Village VR for the PSVR 2, and uh, it, was, it was really challenging. But I feel like Resident Evil 4 just lends itself to VR so well. I mean, the Resident Evil 4 VR for the old version was great, so I'm expecting good stuff from this too. Also, believe it or not, Vanity Fair this week had the first look at the Amazon Fallout TV series. Yes, this is a real thing, and it kind of looks like it's the real deal. Again, we have, it could be terrible, I have no idea, but some of the images that have come out look pretty sweet. We see like Brotherhood of Steel, we see airships, we see abandoned buildings, we see vaults, we see Vault-Tec suits, uh, we also see Walton Goggins as a ghoul, which just, that seems like an incredible choice. I'm gonna show up just for that as a movie fan. It looks like they're going for like Fallout aesthetic, but a little bit of like some grungy Western type stuff, maybe channeling a little New Vegas. Uh, apparently this is actually also going to be canon in the Fallout timeline, which is interesting. That's, you know, be careful with that guys. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, this series may also, uh, according to reports, reveal the origin behind the Vault Boy symbol there's a lot here. I, I hope it's good. I always root for video game things to be good. We don't know for sure, but as of right now, just feast your eyes on these images. And I've linked the Vanity Fair article, just kind of like about the making of it and stuff down in the description. And I want to know what you guys think, honestly. But that's the show this week. So I want to know what you think about all the video game news. It's a bit of a quiet week, but next week, uh, the Avatar game is dropping, the day before is dropping, and the game awards are going down. So yeah. Hopefully we get some good juice out of that. So let me know what you think in the comments about everything we've talked about, you know, from, uh, what do I have on my list here? Oh yeah, Bethesda and the Starfield review thing, that gorgeous Unreal Engine 5 forest, a new Tribes game, and of course, most importantly, what do you play in this weekend? It's for our research, so we can tailor some videos and some lists and news to you guys. So in the pinned comment below this video, it's gonna say like, what games are you playing? Let us know.
Thanks. But that's it, really. So if you want to find me, you can yell at me directly on Twitter and Instagram and threads at Jake Baldino, my other YouTube channel, uh, Jake Baldino, my name. But that's it. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Be safe. I'm Jake Baldino. Pizza's on me.